Hey, buddy. What is going on? It is Obscurus Tourist here once again. And once again, I come to you from my very own backyard, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And the place where I'm standing right here is almost literally my backyard. It is Dufferin Grove Park, right across the street from one of the most ghetto shopping malls in the entire city. Dufferin Mall, or the Dirty Duff, as we Torontonians like to call it. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I usually do a lot of videos out west uh, in California, Arizona, and New Mexico. But since the pandemic hit, I have had to explore my own backyard. And a lot of you have been doing the exact same thing. How do I know this? Because a lot of the places I go that were usually empty are now filled with people like you and your friends, and that's pretty cool. And I have to say, when I first started doing this and exploring, you know, Ontario and Toronto, I was like, there's nothing cool here. But guess what? There are a lot of cool things here. And one of those great examples is right behind me. This little, little park here. This is Remembrance Gardens here in Dufferin Grove. And Right behind that fence and that shrubbery are some old ruins, 101 year old ruins that have been sitting in this park for nearly 25 years. And I have to say, I've walked through this park thousands of times and I have never ever seen this. So it's pretty amazing that what you can accomplish if you actually start exploring and looking around and paying attention to the things that are around you because you can find some cool things like this. So let's get into the history of these amazing stones. Amongst the natural beauty of Dufferin Grove, you'd never really expect to find architectural relics from Toronto's earliest years of commerce, and that is perhaps why I, and many others like you, have overlooked something that has been hiding in plain sight for over 20 years. Now, if you follow the old Garrison Creek Riverbed, located in a gully in the northwest corner of Dufferin Grove, toward Dufferin Street, you'll stumble upon a grouping of young trees and shrubbery that make up the outer ring of Remembrance Gardens. Like I said, these gardens and what's contained within are things I've long taken for granted. Through these shrubs lies a collection of ruins, carved weathered stones that originated from a wonderful building that once stood at the corner of Young and Front Streets here in downtown Toronto. That building in question was the Toronto Custom House, and it was considered as the most impressive this city has ever seen when it was built 175 years ago, back in 1845. Of course, if you're familiar with Toronto and its mm, lack of respect for its own history and architecture, you wouldn't really be surprised to know that the Toronto Custom House stood for just 74 years before it was ultimately demolished and all but forgotten in 1919. As you can see, this whole garden is just a mishmash of old stones, and I'm not even certain as to whether all of these came from the Custom House or if over time it's just prompted people to toss whatever stones they come across here along with the others. But this piece right here is definitely part of those original stones. Where modern buildings today use rebar, it looks like they used to use copper rods to hold the concrete together. And I say copper just because of the green patina I'm seeing here. Now, I bet you're wondering, like me, how the ruins of a building built by one of Ontario's most prolific architects, Kivas Tully, way back in 1845, ended up in a park nearly four miles away from its foundation. Curiously, there is no sign in Dufferin Grove 
that identifies the origins of these architectural wonders or how they even got here. What is known is that these custom house ruins ended up here in 1998, included as part of an artwork called Marsh Fountain in the center of Remembrance Gardens. This, however, begs another bigger question. If the stones arrived here in Dufferin Grove in 1998 and the Toronto Custom House was demolished in 1919, where were the stone heads for those 79 years? Well, parts of the raised Custom House, including the Dufferin Grove stones, were immediately incorporated into a new upper addition in the Colonial Theater at Queen and Bay, across from Toronto's Old City Hall. In 1919, you can see the two stone heads here in this photo. They remained a part of the theater's facade until the Colonial suffered the same fate as the Custom House, ultimately being demolished in 1966. They were to be salvaged and incorporated into the facade of the building that replaced the Colonial, the Simpson Tower. Interestingly, this photo from the Toronto Star shows the heads as they were being salvaged. Ultimately, however, the stones were not used, and this is where the mystery continues, because they ended up in High Park, of all places, some two and a half miles away from Dufferin Grove. Now, how they ended up in High Park from downtown Toronto is something that ultimately may never be known at this point. According to a High Park supervisor, the stones were sitting in a corner of a maintenance yard prior to his arrival in 1991. And it's said that High Park locals during its tenure there referred to the stones as the Witch's Circle due to their arrangement in a semicircle near the supposedly haunted Colborne Lodge. During their time in High Park, the stones had become associated with teenage bush parties, Satan worship, and even animal sacrifice, which, as local lore goes, led to their ultimate removal by park staff. Now, if I'm correct, there used to be four stone heads here, but I can only find two. The two missing from what I can gather are the stone faces of Samuel de Champlain and Giovanni Cabotto, otherwise known as John Cabot. And right here, just on the fringes of the garden, is this upright carved figure, which I believe to be Mercury, the Roman god of commerce, still in wonderful shape, despite being 175 years old. And right in the heart of the garden is this female figure, which is supposedly the embodiment of Toronto. And despite all those years atop buildings being pelted with rain, snow, sleet, and wind, you can still clearly see the old Toronto motto proudly displayed on her collar. It reads, industry, intelligence, integrity, and it really drives home the commercial nature of the building it was once so proudly displayed upon all those years ago. How insanely awesome was that history lesson of something that I have never known to exist. And I'm pretty sure you haven't known of its existence here in Dufferin Grove Park either. So that's my little present to you, the Dufferin Grove Stones here across the street from Dufferin Mall of all places, right? Right. Anyway, look at this. I don't even have a jacket on. It's 25 degrees right now, 25. That's Celsius for all of my American friends. I'm not even going to attempt to figure out what that is in Fahrenheit. You can Google that yourselves. For now, it is Obscurus Tourist wishing you well. Stay safe, stay beautiful, and until next time, so long.